in welcoming Vita office bearers, organizers, fellow alumni, student, faculty colleagues, our speaker, Dr. Prashant Manohar, and other delegates present for this interactive session on evolution and genome analysis of SARS coronavirus 2, which would be the most required topic during this pandemic. Our speaker for this evening, Dr. Prashant Manohar, is a doctoral scientist at Jijang University, University of Edinburgh Institute, International Campus, Haining, China, and also a research fellow at the second affiliated hospital, School of Medicine, Jijang University, Anzhou, China. He is a co-founder of Superbug Team, USA, India, which is manufacturing phage therapy products. He was awarded a PhD degree at the School of Biosciences and Technology, VIT Vellore. His area of expertise includes, but not limited, to antimicrobial resistance, mechanism of resistance in gram-negative bacterial pathogens, bacteriophage biology, phage therapy, and phage license. He is one of the very scientists, very few scientists, who started to use wax worms as a model organism to study the efficacy of phage treatment. He was awarded Inc. Scientist Award 2016 from European Union's Inno Indigo projects. In 2018, he was also conferred with Senior Research Fellowship from CSIR Government of India. The 30th conference organized by European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases at Paris in April 2020 selected him as one of the extraordinary young scientists. At present, he is working as an institute postdoctor fellow and research fellow. He is a member of various international microbiology and virology societies. He has authored more than 30 research and review publications in reputed international journals and holds an Indian patent for bacteriophage lyophilization. He is also serving as a faith scientist and scientific advisor for Superbug Team USA India. Without further delay, I take the privilege in inviting Dr. Prasant Manohar to deliver his talk. Over to you, Prasant. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this brief introduction. So good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Dr. Prasant Manohar. An alumnus of VAT. I did my PhD in VAT Vellu in the School of Biosciences and Technology from 2004. Yeah, under the guidance of uh, Dr. N. Ramesh, at, at present, I am serving as a co-founder and a phase scientist for a superbug team. We started a superbug team to produce phage-related products for curing bacterial infections caused by antibiotic-resistant bacteria, both in India and the USA. At present, I am working as a postdoctoral scientist at Jizang University in School of Medicine, uh, Jizang in China. So today I will be sharing and discussing evolution and genomic analysis of source related coronavirus 2 and I will be also sharing my views about the evolution of these coronaviruses. So coming to the introduction, coronaviruses are known to cause infections in both mammals and birds. In humans, they cause uh, severe respiratory tract infections so these coronaviruses or uh, enveloped viruses with a single standard positive sense or RNA as their genome. And to date, these coronaviruses are uh, one of the known largest uh, RNA viruses identified. And uh, most of the coronavirus carry a genome size between uh, 27 to 34 kb. And this uh, SARS COV2, a new coronavirus which causes a recent pandemic, uh, has a genome size of around 29 kb. So, there is a lot of confusion about these uh, terms called SARS COV2 and COVID 19. Uh, SARS COV2 is a virus name which causes this uh, COVID 19 disease. SARS stands for a severe acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus 2. The first outbreak from this uh, family of virus came in 2002, which is called SARS-CoV. 
so the disease caused by this or cov2 is called covid 19 covid stands for coronavirus disease 19 the year in which this disease was identified in Wuhan in china so this human coronaviruses was first identified in 1965 uh, which causes common cold in humans so based on their shape which looks like drone like appearance they were named as coronaviruses so up to date uh, seven coronaviruses had been identified to infect humans and this uh, yellow box shows all the seven uh, coronaviruses identified up to date that are known to cause infections in humans and most of these coronaviruses have uh, bat as their host and I, I will talk about this later so the first four which are marked in blue color which causes mild infections in humans and the uh, bottom three which are marked in red which causes a very uh, serious infections in humans uh, which are uh, related to uh, respiratory diseases so mers uh, middle east respiratory syndrome uh, was a virus which had an outbreak in 2012 in uh, Saudi Arabia and the other two are uh, SARS related coronaviruses which causes uh, respiratory tract infections. So coming to the origin and evolution of this uh, coronaviruses, uh, taxonomy, these all coronaviruses belong to the order of amylovirus uh, and they belong to the family coronaviridae and the subfamily of coronavirinae and uh, they have uh, differentiated this uh, coronaviruses into four different genus alpha beta delta and gamma and all these coronaviruses that causes uh, serious infections uh, comes under uh, beta coronavirus uh, genus so coming to the phylogenetic relationship of this all uh, coronaviruses uh, the ones at the left side of my slide which are marked in are black are the ones which causes mild infections in humans and the ones at the right side that is uh, more in black uh, red and green are known to cause some serious infections in humans not all identified coronavirus up to date are known to have a bad origin the ones which are marked at the bottom which is in blue color uh, do not have bats as their host they are known to originate from rats or mice all other coronaviruses uh, belonging to beta coronavirus family are known to originate from uh, bats so coming to this uh, beta coronavirus uh, lineage b and c beta coronavirus belonging to the lineage b are always known to have a bat origin which has identified to have a zoonotic transfer mostly in the cats and then it is known to translate to humans which causes SARS related infections coming to the beta coronavirus of lineage c are known to have again known to have a origin from the bat and they are known to have a zoonotic transfer either in a horseshoe bats or in mammals then they are known to infect humans. The very common uh, camel related virus is uh, MERS virus, which is causing a serious infections up to date. And this uh, SARS COV, SARS related coronavirus, are known to cause uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is called as ARDS. And this uh, MERS related uh, coronavirus are known to cause gastrointestinal symptoms or gastrointestinal tract infections. So coming to the evolution of this coronavirus genome, uh, looking into the organization and evolution of this coronavirus genome, you can see at the top, uh, the first identified uh, coronavirus 229E, human coronavirus 229E, is found to have a very short or a very simple uh, genome architecture. So the, the ones marked in the green and the yellow are a very common uh, structural and non-structural proteins that are belonging to all the coronaviruses for example or of 1a or of 1b and other structural proteins are very common for all the other identified coronaviruses the very interesting thing to note here is how this uh, genome of this coronavirus has evolved up to date so there are a lot of uh, news going on about uh, 
how this coronaviruses are mutating or evolving uh, within humans or uh, in animals. You can see how this genome got evolved by the year, al almost by 50 years now. Another very peculiar thing about this coronavirus genome is this war of eight. War of eight is very commonly found in the source related human coronaviruses. And this war of three region that is next to a spike protein is always found in the coronaviruses which are having ACE2 as a receptor in humans. You can see the human coronavirus NL63 also has a war of three region which has ACE2 as a receptor. So coming to the uh, previous epidemic and pandemics due to this uh, coronavirus, you can see we had a first outbreak, a uh, major outbreak due to a uh, human coronavirus that is SARS in 2002, which started in Hong Kong in China, and which is known to have a fatality rate of around 9.2%. And the second outbreak due to human coronavirus was in 2012 from Saudi Arabia, uh, which happened from bad to mammal to human, uh, which had a very high fatality rate of 34.5%. This new coronavirus that is our COV2, which originated from Wuhan city in uh, China in 2019, which was identified in 2019, uh, which was found to have, uh, which is found to have a fatality rate of around 6%. And we are yet to come to conclusion what is the exact fertility rate of this coronavirus. So coming to the life cycle of this uh, coronavirus. So this coronavirus that is SARS-CoV enters the human cell by binding to a ACE2 receptor, angiotensin converting enzyme ACE2 receptor, and they enter in, inside a human cell and uh, the genome gets released, that is RNA. Then RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, a very peculiar enzyme for uh, RNA-based viruses, uh, synthesizes all the proteins inside the human cell and uh, uh, assembly takes place and uh, a virus particle get released uh, from a human cell. This is how a virus gets uh, multiplied inside a human cell. Once a virus enters a human cell, it produces in, in large numbers so it can infect more than one cells in the second cycle. So genome of SARS-CoV-2. So this is the structure of this uh, human uh, coronavirus, uh, which has a lipid bilayer membrane, which is a circular membrane. Uh, this is a particular membrane which gets uh, washed out when we use a soap solution. That is one of the reasons why we use uh, soap solutions to kill this uh, virus. So we have uh, other four structural proteins, spike protein, envelope protein, membrane protein, and a nucleic acid protein coming to this uh, second structure. So we have uh, two uh, war of regions, that is war of 1A and war of 1B, which holds 16 uh, non-structural proteins. These non-structural proteins are also targeted by a uh, few vaccine makers. Uh, this, uh, for a non-structural protein that is NSP3 is a particular protein which is mostly targeted by uh, most of the vaccine makers who are making vaccines for us or CoV2. So we have four structural proteins and we have nine accessory proteins. These accessory proteins are very important uh, for this virus to help in binding to a human receptors like ACE2. So the very interesting uh, structure about this uh, spike protein, uh, coming to the spike protein, which is marked in uh, pink color, has uh, two subunits. All these uh, spike proteins identified in coronaviruses are found to have uh, two subunits, that is S1 and S2. This S1 subunit is very, very important because they hold a ribosome binding domain. This ribosome binding domain is very, very important for this viruses to get attached to a human ACE2 receptor. So this ribosome binding domains, any mutation within this RBD domain will have a major changes in the binding ability of this coronavirus. 
so comparing the uh, analysis genome analysis of the three coronaviruses that was uh, first iso isolated from humans from in Wuhan in 2019 and a uh, bat coronavirus and third one is a uh, SARS uh, coronavirus which was isolated in 2002 when we compare all the three genome we can see that the uh, the first uh, genome which is not at the top of the picture shows uh, the, the number of amino acids in the uh, spike protein is very high than the other two coronavirus genome that was isolated from bat and uh, 2002 which causes 2002 outbreak which is a, a very notable feature of this uh, coronavirus because this coronavirus is having a very high uh, percentage of infection throughout the world and they are known to be contagious also so these spike proteins might be one of the reasons why these coronaviruses is are causing a very very serious infections in humans as well so coming to the phylogenetic analysis of this identified uh, coronavirus genome from Wuhan in 2019 with other coronavirus family you can see this the one more uh, in the red which is marked as 2019 novel uh, coronavirus is the new coronavirus which was identified in Wuhan and comparing this genome with the bad coronavirus genome from a Zhejiang province you can see it has a similarity between this a bad coronavirus as well very interestingly this coronavirus the genome was also found to have a very high similarity with the coronavirus genome which was uh, sequenced in 2002 so we can say that this uh, new coronavirus which has evolved slowly to infect humans uh, there is a route of transmission which has to be identified up to date uh, we, we, could, we could say that it could have originated from bat and it reached pangolins and then it reached humans. So now we have a human infection in those numbers. So there is a lot of information about whether this uh, coronavirus that is SARS-CoV-2 is manipulated, man-made, escaped from a Wuhan laboratory. And they say the Wuhan Institute of Virology is storing a lot of uh, coronavirus samples and whether it could have escaped from the lab. So I will be discussing a few things about this. So I will be mining into the genome of SARS-CoV-2 to explain why this coronavirus is not a man-made one. So there are two notable features about this coronavirus. One is the binding ability of this coronavirus to the human AC2 receptor, where we can find some changes in the amino acid sequences. And the second one is a, a functional polyphasic uh, cleavage site between the S1 and S2 boundary of the spike protein. So coming to the first uh, concept, uh, there is a mutation in the spike protein. So coming to this picture here, so I have marked a uh, six amino acids here and on the left I have marked what these genomes belong to. The human SARS-CoV-2 is the new coronavirus and the bat and the pangolin coronavirus and the human coronavirus which was isolated in 2002. When we compare this, all these genomes and these spike proteins, you can see this human coronavirus COV-2 and the pangolin uh, coronavirus has similarities. All these six uh, very peculiar amino acids are very similar to both humans and the pangolin coronavirus. But bat coronavirus and uh, human coronavirus that is SARS-CoV-2 that was isolated in 2002 had only one similarity, which is the uh, first one and the uh, last one. So by this, we can say that this uh, particular SARS-CoV-2 happens by evolution and this is not a manipulated one. So the second notable feature is the acquisition of polyphasic cleavage site. So within the spike protein in the uh, S2 subunit that is between the junction of S1 and S2, we can see there is a addition of amino acids, which is called a polyphasic cleavage site, which is known to have some very important function 
for a receptor binding that is AC2 binding in human beings. This new addition makes the O linked glycan residues for a better receptor binding ability of this SARS-CoE2, which means that these are happened or happening due to evolution or the natural mutation. So taking this concept into the evolutionary mechanisms based on the phylogenetic tree, we can say that the human coronavirus or COV2 has similarity with a bat coronavirus because bat is a host of all the coronaviruses, which can be compared with a pangolin coronavirus. So we can say both humans and bat has a, a similar coronavirus, which can be compared with pangolins. But when Studying the genome of this SARS-CoV-2, we can come to a conclusion that both human and pangolin coronavirus have a similarity, which means that a coronavirus could have originated from bat and it could have reached pangolins and there might be some evolution happened in inside a pangolin, then it reached humans, then we had a major outbreak in human So this is how this might have happened based on the spike uh, protein mutations. Coming to the third concept of uh, polyphagic uh, cleavage site, as I said earlier, there is no similarity between uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, isolated from a human, either with a bat coronavirus or a pangolin coronavirus, which means that a bat coronavirus should have originated from bat and it could have reached humans by by the, by the month of July or August in 2019, and it started evolving within uh, human beings. So as it evolved for two to three months, they found a way to infect a human cell that is to uh, for bind to the ACE2 receptor. So after uh, September or November 2019, we could have identified this virus uh, to get infected inside a human. This is how this coronavirus might have uh, originated. Uh, this is one of the theories which is approved up to date. There is no alternative theories to disprove this particular concept. Uh, so it is improbable that SARS-CoV-2 emerged to laboratory manipulation. As I said, there is no notable features to note that this coronavirus is has been manipulated. All this uh, amino acid mutations and polyphagic cleavage site insertions are a natural process that evolved in the coronavirus itself. So another important thing to note here is these viruses are not leaked from any lab because this O-linked uh, glycans which I explained in a polyphasic cleavage site, this can happen only in the presence of an immune system. It can't happen inside a, a cell culture lab. So this coronavirus should have evolved within a living species. So it could be either a pangolin or a human being itself. So based on this, we have uh, two scenarios now. One is a natural selection in an animal host before zoonotic transfer and natural selection in humans following the zoonotic transfer. So coming to this, so coronavirus from the bat could have reached pangolins then to humans. So from the bat, they, 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 they don't have the ability to bind to AC2 receptor because AC2 receptor are very common. So after transferring to pangolins, they could have evolved and found a way to bind to AC2 receptor. Once they have found a way to bind to AC2 receptor, they could have jumped to humans to infect human beings. The second concept is from the bat, the virus could have jumped to humans, evolved within the human being, that is natural selection could, could have occurred within the human being before a virus could have infected and killed a human being. So this is how this theory works and this is how this SARS-CoV-2 is found to be originated. So coming to the different strains and uh, um, mutations that were identified in this SARS-CoV-2 up to date. So there are three major strains found uh, this type A, type B and type C. Type C, type A is the first coronavirus that was identified from the bat and pangolin. 
and this is uh, this type a is considered to be the root of the outbreak and type b is differs from type a by a single mutation earlier in another study scientists have said that this type a is a s strain and the type b is a l strain and l strain is found to have a major outbreak in the city of Wuhan, not a A strain. So A strain might be uh, consigned with a pangolin. So the B strain which uh, had a major outbreak in Wuhan and infected uh, human beings. So type C, type C is a daughter of a type A. So this differs by uh, one mutation. And uh, this type C is very commonly found in uh, European countries. Uh, especially in Italy. So this is a complete uh, epidemiological study uh, done by uh, Cambridge University to see how this has different strains spreads throughout the world. So in the city of Wuhan in China, we can see that both type A and type B strains were present. So this uh, type B strain uh, travels from uh, Wuhan to most of the European countries and to Canada as well. But a type A strain uh, travels to Australia and mostly in USA, the first uh, patient from uh, Seattle. I think it is in Seattle. Uh, infection happened from uh, Wuhan to a uh, Seattle patient who travels from Wuhan to Seattle. So type C, so type C is very common among uh, European people, especially in Italy. So as per I am doing some uh, genomic analysis on uh, COV2. So uh, I could say that most of the Indian populations are infected with a type B strain. So this is uh, dif to differentiate what are the mutation happening inside this SARS-CoV2 genome. And you can see starting from the month of December that is marked in blue, you can see what are the mutations or the mutation that have happened within this uh, viral genome and none of these mutations are found to be uh, decreasing the uh, fatality rate. So up to March, we can say almost uh, 25 to 30 mutations were found in this uh, viral genome. So coming to the same epidemiological study by Fester and group from Cambridge University and they, they, they said the very interesting report from the study is most of the strains are found throughout the globe. There is no particular strain that is confined to a particular country, which means that as we travel between countries, as transportation becomes very easy nowadays, we take different strains to different places so that this virus spread is uh, happening very, very fast. So very very peculiar study about this uh, Cambridge report is they, are, they found a coronavirus genome from a Yuhan uh, province, which is present in the further south of Wuhan city. This coronavirus genome has a very high similarity with a coronavirus genome that was isolated from a pangolins from a Yonan province in China. If that is true, this coronavirus that is SARS-CoV-2 might have originated from Ionan province and traveled to Wuhan. And at the city of Wuhan, we could be able to uh, find people getting infected. So this is how this could have happened because there are a lot of theories about uh, whether this coronavirus originated from uh, pangolins or not. But if this a Campbell study is true, then we could say that this uh, coronavirus might have originated from a different region, not exactly from Wuhan city. A single mutation was found in the spike protein of this. Coronavirus. So they Mutation was found in a 614th amino acid of a spike protein, exactly 20,403, the amino acid number for a complete genome. So we they found uh, aspartic acid D to be converted to glycine G, which 
have which might have a major change in the behavior of the coronavirus uh, but up to date this mutation doesn't appear to make people sicker but this virus is getting more contagious so this uh, mutation might not exactly involve in a uh, receptor binding protein so this uh, particular mutation might help the virus to transmit more faster get between the outbreaks from jan to june you can say that this particular mutation was not found in the C uh, cov2 when it started in jan so as the virus spreads throughout the globe this mutation becomes very common in the uh, viral genome so we can say that this uh, particular mutation is one of the reason why this virus is spreading very very fast or becoming unstable so coming to the uh, genetic epidemiology in india so in india we, we did a very interesting study uh, from igib in collaboration with csir and the genomes uh, this particular study published had compared to the team genomes that was sequenced in india and they found four clades in india that is four different strains based on the uh, mutations and they were grouped into a2a a3 b b4 and a3 Hi. so this a2a a3 b and b4 are very commonly this a2a a3 b b4 are very commonly found throughout the globe but this new clade that is a3i is very clade is uh, this a3i might be one of the reasons why uh, some states in india are having a high you know, more number of people getting infected but the study output says that all the strains in india have a 99 to 100% homology but had a 93% homology with the bat coronavirus genome and a 84% homology with the pangolin coronavirus genome so we can say that this particular clade might not be very common in india but it is a same strain which was isolated in different parts of the world and a study also said that uh, this particular A3I clad is causing most of the infections in the states of Tamil Nadu. Might be one of the reasons why these uh, two or three states are having very high infection rate. So coming to the mutations and uh, how they differentiated uh, this coronavirus gene based on the clads. Uh, I am very much interested about this A3I, which I have marked in the arrows. This A3I genome has a one very interesting mutation in the spike protein. So this is one of the rare mutations that was found in uh, other coronavirus genomes throughout the globe. So this is a very interesting uh, study. Which reports a new strain of coronavirus from Indian samples. So again, this A3I. I think the others got very much interested in this A3I, and they have compared this A3I with different states in India. And you can see this a violet ones. You can see this a particular strain has spread to all the states in India, which means that. the states like tamil nadu delhi or maharashtra are the are not the only states that is having this particular strain uh, all other states are also having this particular strain and one of the drawbacks of this particular study is the comparison that was made between different states or the number of genomes that they compared is not same between the different states so we can't exactly say that this a particular a3i uh, clad or strain is a uh, commonly found in states where a uh, coronavirus infection is very very high 
so coming to the mutate uh, class that was identified in India, you can see up to 25 mutations were found in the A2 A clad and very very less amount of mutations were found in this new A3 I clad which means that this a clad of or strain of coronavirus might be originating in India but there is no uh, concluding study to prove this particular concept. So again coming to the uh, transmission of this uh, five clads within India as we move between different states and you can see we, we share all the clads of coronavirus between all these uh, states and mostly in, in Tamil Nadu we, we can see that both clads K2A and A3 are very common and they, both these two clads are found to have uh, very high mutation. So again, uh, from uh, Tamil Nadu population, uh, the study showed that most of the uh, people are infected with a uh, clad of A3I, but which is originated from uh, Hyderabad, that is Telangana. But when genomic analysis was performed by this group, we can see that not only uh, A3I clad, but uh, A to A clad of strains are also found in uh, region of Tamil Nadu, which means that this uh, coronavirus spread is uh, occurring very, very fast and there is no particular route of transmission for this uh, particular virus. So this is a very new study that was published in the Indian Journal of Medical Microbiology recently and they have uh, compared the uh, clinical samples of patients who traveled from uh, China, Italy and Iran where they had a very high uh, and the ones which I have marked in the red color arrows are this study clearly shows that the Indian samples were very commonly belonging to all the clads and there is no particular clad of strain that was uh, that was particularly identified in India. Whatever we have identified in India are the same uh, strains that was uh, infecting uh, through the globe. There is no uh, particular strain of virus which is belonging to an Indian population or uh, evolved within an Indian population. So this is a uh, genopedia which uh, used to study all this uh, phylogenetic analysis. So coming to the vaccines for uh, COVID-19, which is a very interesting topic at this uh, point of time. So there are uh, five different types of vaccines which can be developed. One is uh, DNA or RNA based vaccines and they teach the immune system to target the key viral proteins such as uh, spike proteins and uh, Moderna and uh, in the video, and I think uh, from India is also working on DNA based coronavirus vaccine. The other one is a live attenuated vaccines. Uh, it is a very common vaccine that vaccines. So these are the heat kill viruses which will be induced in uh, immune response in humans. Uh, Sino, uh, Sinovac is uh, particular company which particularly works on inactivated vaccines and a very famous vaccine is uh, polio. This inactivated vaccine, Bharat Biotech is working on inactivated vaccines. So another one is the subunit based vaccines where uh, virus subunits are used to induce a system. So the one is a viral vectors. So where a virus, how long it takes for a vaccine to, whatever I have marked in the reds or the ones which I will be explaining, influenza virus. Influenza had a major outbreak in 1939 and we had a vaccine in 2004, that is a concluding vaccine we had in 2004. And for tuberculosis, we are still working on a vaccine. BCG is a very famous vaccine which is used in the Indian population. And polio, the infection started in 1908 and we had a polio drop 
or polyvaccine by 1955. So you could have a fox. It started in 1953 and we had a vaccine in 1995 and we also have a booster dose now. So hepatitis, hepatitis started in 1965. So we have a this vaccine now and the, the vaccine came out in 1981 so it took around 20 years for vaccine to come out so we are still working on the AIDS or HIV vaccine from 1983 we are yet to come out with a vaccine for uh, HIV so this is a realistic time how long a vaccine so this is a process of vaccine development so basic research starts in the lab so the candidate selection and coming to the clinical trial we have a four phase of clinical trials so phase one includes the safety studies in healthy humans mostly done on the target population. Mostly uh, 1,000 to 3,000 volunteers are uh, involved in uh, phase 3 studies. During all these phases, there are a lot of works to be done in between. So this clinical trial process is not very, very easy. So we have to plan for a clinical trial. Then we have to take the patient that is a volunteers, healthy volunteers for phase one and phase two clinical trial. Then we have to go for ethical committee clearance. Then we have patient approval forms. Then we go for a site start up in the hospital where a patients will be added in. Then we will go for screening and enrollment of the patients where a mutual consent form will be given to a patient to sign. And we have uh, to collect data and we have to analyze data. Then only a single clinical trial will get over by the end of a data analysis. So clinical trial phases are not very, very easy. So it takes a lot, lot of, lot of time and manpower to complete this. Then even after completing the uh, clinical trials, different phases of clinical trials, then we have a regulatory review. Then we have a product launch. Product launch is where a scale-up process takes place. Most companies will do In a clinical trial process. If a company is saying that I have a particular product for, uh, for So coming to the vaccine tracker. Hello. Yes, yes. It's visible now. Go it's, on. Uh, carry on, carry on, carry on. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, coming to the vaccine tracker for uh, this uh, coronavirus, particularly for SARS-CoV-2, we have around uh, 155 vaccines being developed by different companies in different countries and we have uh, 23 vaccines officially sent into human trials and this is the complete list of uh, vaccines that have caused a particular stage uh, 135 plus vaccines have reached a preclinical stage preclinical in sense up to animal studies from basic research to in vivo studies to animal studies phase one phase two phase three and approval one vaccine has been approval approved in china i, I will be discussing about this in the later sections so these are some of the companies that are doing pre-clinical pre studies. 
so most of this uh, companies belong to USA so most of the companies are doing both phase one and phase two clinical trials at the same time to rush up the uh, vaccine production so they, the two well-known companies in India are the Cydes and Bharat Biotech. So Bharat Biotech is particularly working on DNA-based vaccines and Cydes is particularly working on uh, inactivated vaccines. And there are other companies from Japan as well who are uh, working on phase one and phase two clinical trials. And we have, we have uh, a Chinese company working for uh, DNA-based vaccines. DNA-based vaccines are very, very new to humans. There is no vaccine that was approved that works based on a DNA or RNA. So this US-based company called Morena has uh, approved phase two clinical trial uh, two days back. And I, I hope they are going to start a phase three clinical trial by uh, July 27th. And, uh, the other uh, Sansino Bio from China has also completed phase two clinical trial yesterday, and they will be moving to a phase three clinical trial. And already, uh, San uh, Cansino Bio has a uh, vaccine that was approved by the Chinese government to be used in milk. So this uh, Oxford uh, trial is also getting uh, ended by uh, this month. So for phase three. So again, I said uh, this uh, Oxford trial is uh, getting into phase three clinical trial and uh, uh, the Wuhan Institute of Biological Products who developed a uh, vaccine in 2008 and they are testing the same vaccine and they have passed phase two and phase three trials at this stage. And Sinovac is also a Chinese company that is producing, producing vaccines and they have passed phase three clinical trial yesterday. And, uh, the other one at the bottom is an Australian company uh, who is working on a phase three clinical trail. They started a phase three clinical trail this month. And the, the very interesting uh, cancer boy is a Chinese uh, a vaccine maker uh, who produced a vaccine for a coronavirus. And they, in the vaccine they produced first were approved by the Chinese government to be used for a military purpose only, not for other uh, civilian purposes. Uh, the other uh, very well and popular uh, vaccine from a Chinese company, uh, they, they cleared phase one and phase two clinical trial and uh, they haven't started phase three, uh, uh, they haven't got approval from uh, any agencies. So whatever the uh, vaccine developed from uh, China, which is on the news for past one week, is based on uh, results from phase one and phase two clinical trial, and they haven't completed a phase three clinical trial. So, summary of my presentation. So, the genomic structure uh, I have explained a uh, genome architecture and how this uh, coronavirus has evolved by years, and how this genetic transfer is happening from uh, bats to either cat or mammal or, uh, or any other uh, animals. And the, this genetic transfer-based viruses has to be studied in detail because this uh, coronaviruses can cause infections in future. So uh, though a few mutations were found in this spike proteins, especially D614G, there is no confirming evidence that uh, this uh, particular coronavirus is becoming less lethal or are causing uh, more contagiousness. So the origin of the virus spread is still under investigation. I hope the uh, World Health Organization is reaching uh, China by next month to investigate how this uh, coronavirus has evolved. Though it, it might take at least six months for uh, vaccine makers to complete the clinical trials, uh, most of the clinical trials are, are mixed up. So hope this vaccines will be approved by the CRM. So these are the references that I have used for the study. Even I'm also studying on a genomic analysis of the SARS virus. And this is a particular uh, technique which I'm working with my university uh, to produce a vaccine against this uh, SARS-CoV-2. What we are doing is we are, doing, we are working on uh, uh, reverse vaccinology technique where we are uh, taking a 
conserved regions from the this viral genome particularly on uh, non structural and non structural proteins uh, spike proteins and we are expressing and purifying this uh, proteins in e coli and we have passed on to do some animal studies in mice and we have passed the initial study so the very interesting aspect of our study is we are using both the genomes of uh, structural and non structural proteins we have chosen a conserved region from a structural as well as a non structural proteins to make the vaccine target a little broader than a single target so this is one of the concept which i am part of the vaccine development in my university so this is the basic research what i am doing at jisang university as well as in the second affiliated hospital in the school of medicine i am working on a bacteriophage therapy phase therapy is the use of live bacteriophages to cure bacterial infections and i will be moving on to do some clinical trials using this bacteriophage therapy and the second concept i'm working is on the antibiotic resistance particularly on the antibiotics called carbapenem and colistin and these are the one of the last resort antibiotics for uh, human use thank you for your attention and i would like to thank vatl administration vatl management and vat faculties uh, for their for arranging this uh, wonderful meet and i thank all other participants as well thank you so much we are very glad to have your presentation today and uh, now the session is open for discussion participants with uh, with any queries you can type it in the chat box which can be discussed now yeah dr prashad i have a question i am anand from biotechnology anand premrajan yes sir Hello. yes sir sir this virus if uh, why can't we produce a novel virus using viral transduction if we infect the same animal with various viruses they will exchange the genome right yeah. and when the genome is exchanged we can always get a novel virus and it can be used as a bio weapon like uh, i used to teach this uh, subject bio safety and bio weapons so if you have na uh, because you are working with the viruses So like stealth virus, stealth virus which was developed long back to jeopardize the plant's genome, like that. Why can't this virus, as you have said, basically the virus will survive only in the living organism. So definitely it cannot be manipulated outside the body. But if you infect the same organism with various viruses, the genome will be exchanged, and why can't you produce a very harmful virus? So. it's like a very interesting concept but we have to work on that um, like because in 19, 1998 in 1998 i did a small assignment in my cell biology class on virus transduction so in that one i read a small experiment where various viruses are infected in the same animal and then uh, that will produce a novel virus and uh, so why it can't be in 1998 and this is 2020 right so <laughs> it has gone long ago this thing so why yeah, such thing cannot look, be done no yeah looks like a very interesting concept but we have to look into how this particular concept will work against the coronavirus yeah and what do you feel about the genetic shift and drift because genetic shift is yes is possible no. and what about the bottleneck and genetic drift Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Good afternoon. Yeah, because you are Good talking afternoon. with the genome. We are talking about the genome. So when we study the population genetics, now if there is a genetic drift, so that is because of some novel. Now, why can't we apply that principle here in our coronaviruses? Yeah, it can be applied, but uh, I am very much interested. To Study the positive selection and how this coronavirus is getting evolved. And uh, even in my team, my 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 most of my work is based on uh, okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. mutations just... within this <laughs> yeah genome. So I haven't worked on the other concepts. Mm -hmm. 
I am particularly working on genome mutations and how this viruses are getting evolved and what are the different strains that are being identified in different ones. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. Yeah. Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, my my country, my question is that the S protein of SARS-CoV-2 yeah. and uh, SARS-CoV-1, the, the S protein, you know, we have the S protein, yeah. the L protein, the S protein of SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2 are responsible for the viral entry of uh, this uh, cell membrane of this uh, so-called virus. How sure is that? Yeah. May you made mention of something about the uh, the S protein of SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, 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 I can understand. I can understand. Yeah, yeah. So, so what you were saying about the S proteins are spike proteins. So these spike proteins have a particular ribosome binding domains. Okay. Are they, are they the one responsible for the viral entry mediate? Viral entry uh, mediate. Are they the one that are responsible for the binding of the host cell membrane? Yeah, this spike proteins get attached to a ACA2 receptor in the human cell. Okay. Which makes the virus entry very easy. Okay, that makes it very to enter very easy into the host cell. Yeah, both this yeah. SARS-CoV-1 and the SARS-CoV-2 has uh, almost 99% homologous uh, spike protein structures. So okay. this viral entry becomes very easy for this uh, source related coronavirus. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Prashant, I have a question myself. There is a talk about the blood group. Few blood group has got more chance of getting this uh, COVID. So I would like to hear that from you. What is your view on it? Uh, as far as I have gone through the article which was published, Actually, it is not published. It is still in the peer review stage. And I believe the number of samples, what they have done is very, very small. They have totally used 40 samples. I think the sample numbers are very, very less when considering a pandemic throughout the world. So they might have compared with more than 1,000 samples or more than 5,000 samples to conclude that this particular blood group is having higher immunity than the others. So this is not a concluding concept, according to my knowledge. Okay, right. Uh, I think the questions are all. Huh? Is there any other Hello? question from the... Yeah. Can I have another question, please? Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Uh, regarding to the mutation points, you mentioned something about the mutation points of uh, COVID-2, SARS-CoV-2. Did they share the same similarity with that of COVID-1, SARS-CoV-1? Yeah. Mutation points of SARS-CoV-2. Did they share the same, the same similarity with that of SARS-CoV-1? Yeah, the, whatever the mutations that have been identified in SARS-CoV-2, after a pandemic will not be identified in a source COV-1 because the evolution doesn't happen that way. Okay. But both the source COV-1 and the source COV-2 share 73% okay. homologous genome structures. Okay, they are homologous, they are okay functions, yeah. okay, various, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. That is what I wanted to say. I'm very, very grateful for this clarity. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. So the topic dis discussed today is something that is of entire, world, entire world's interest now. And uh, thank you so much uh, from the team VIT which will include all the VITA members. It's a big thanks from everyone.